Hi, um, my name is Fabian Hüske. I'm working at the uh, TU Berlin, so one of the universities here in Berlin. And I'm going to talk uh, about massively parallel analytics beyond map and reduce. This talk is in the context of the Stratosphere project. Um, that is a research project um, that is uh, jointly done by five uh, research groups working in the uh, database and distributed systems um, fields here from the Berlin-Brandenburg area. And um, the goal of the project is to explore how cloud computing can be used to analyze massive data sets. So um, we follow here a kind of database-inspired uh, approach, which we try to combine with the MapReduce technologies. Um, we strive to, to handle both textual and uh, uh, structured data, and um, yeah, finally try to do um, complex analytics on, on huge data sets. So this is one of the use cases we, we have in mind for, for this, uh, this system, for, for our project that comes from the climate research. Um, we are, have a collaboration with the Potsdam Institute for Climate Research Impact. So those guys try to figure out what impact the, the climate change will have on the economy, on the um, society, and, and all, all aspects of those impacts. And um, the guys there, they... Um, generate so-called climate models by simulating the, the climate in the future. And those data sets are quite, quite, have a quite large size. So um, the, the data sets um, have multiple dimensions, so the spatial dimensions and time dimension. And for each point in this data grid, they have certain par parameters uh, generated, so such as temperature and humidity and stuff like that. And they're trying to, 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 do, to, to analyze those, those data cubes and find, for example, hotspots within the data cube, for example, uh, droughts or floodings that, that occur or that, that were simulated, um, try to validate whether the simulation was, was uh, produced valid results, and also try to compare different climate models, possibly coming from uh, multiple simulations with different parameters or having a real data set and simulating the, the, the past. Um, so what, what kind of operations do they need to, to do that? So there are very basic operations like filtering, projection, and joining, but also more complex operations, for example, um, sliding window operations or um, temporal and um, geospatial joints. And finally, they also like to handle the uncertainty that comes with the simulation of those data. Um, here's some, some other use cases uh, we, we are working on. So those come from the uh, biological uh, background. So uh, doing text mining on biological uh, reports and the cleansing of linked open data. So this is the outline for the talk. Um, first, I'm going to, to talk about the motivation beyond the stratosphere system. Then I'll give you a short overview over the architecture of our system then present the, our new PAC programming model, which, which is a generalization of the MapReduce programming model, talk a little bit on our execution engine called Nephila, and finally, how we can parallelize the execution of our PAC programs on Nephila. So um, for, for motivation, here is a uh, SQL query. So although one of the buzzwords is NoSQL, uh, here's, here's a SQL query. That is pretty, pretty simple. We have two tables. We join them and finally do an aggregation on the joint result. Um, trying to execute that using MapReduce would result, or one, one possibility to do that with MapReduce is using two MapReduce jobs, the first job doing the join, and the second one doing the aggregation and the, the grouping and the aggregation. So to do that, the, for in the first MapReduce job that does the join reads both input sets, um, tags, where the tuples come from, repartitions um, the, the data on the, on the join key, and in the reducer, the join is done, and finally, the, the rest is, yeah, known business, so it is pretty easy. So mapping that to, to a uh, Hadoop execution plan would result in, yeah, two times do, doing basically the same thing, so mapping, uh, shuffling the data, sorting the data at the reducer, and then doing the reduce step, and in between those two MapReduce jobs, 
the results would be written to, into HDFS, and that means the data is shuffled twice, and yeah, the intermediate result is written into the, into the file system. There is at least one other option to do that. We could also use the distributed cache to simulate something like a, a broadcast strategy. So this way we would put the smaller relation, which is the orders table, into the distributed cache, and then all mappers could access the data within the cache and um, do the join within the map step, and then only requiring the reduce step to do the aggregation. So this would result in only one map reduce job, so we, um, we don't have to shuffle the data twice. We don't have to write intermediate result into the uh, distributed file system. And um, this, this plan is, is efficient if the ORS table, or the, the, the data set for, for the order, uh, or else order table is pretty small. Um, but here we have a problem. So here the, the, the developer who implements that has to um, put, put parallelization code within the, uh, within the map shop. So uh, this is uh, hidden from the, from the, from the map reuse engine from, from Hadoop. So uh, the programmer has to take care um, how, how the data is shuffled in the network. So this is something that actually the programming model should take care of. So the motivation for the stratosphere system comes from, from two, basically from two points. The first one is that complex analy analysis tasks must be pushed into the MapReduce programming model. So it's not always that easy to, uh, to, to find a mapping for, for a certain job into MapReduce. So the, the person who implements that has to yeah, really, really think hard about how to put that efficiently into MapReduce, um, which means often that the developer has to, has to write parallelization code and that this information or the, uh, how, how the data is parallelized or how the uh, data is shuffled is, is hidden from the MapReduce engine. Um, so the framework doesn't know what's happening, what's going on. So examples for that are uh, things when you have multiple input sets into your jobs or if you do things like um, range partitioning or window operations. Um, the other thing is that Hadoop follows a very static execution strategy. So basically, uh, every, every MapReduce job is executed the same, the same way, which makes it very good to predict how it will, how it will perform. It also um, has excellent fault tolerance in, in doing so, but it doesn't not necessarily uh, give you the best performance or the, um, the, the, best ex the best strategy to shuffle your data through your network. Um, and if you, if you have something like the, the uh, join task I presented before, um, the person who, who implements the job must decide uh, whether he follows the repartition strategy to do the join or whether the, the broadcast option would be better. So there is no, can no, is no automatic optimization applied. So you have to decide which of the alternative strategies do I implement and then do that. Of course, if you use something like, um, like Hive or, or Pig or, or Jackal, which <coughs> compiles your MapReduce jobs down where you only have some, some, some declarative notion of, of I want to join those two things, uh, the, the framework takes care of that, but still um, the, the execution might not be as, um, as efficient as it could be. So here's an architectural overview. So we, we have here three different stacks. The first stack is the uh, Hadoop stack. We have uh, the Hadoop, or the, the, I divided the architecture into three tiers. So the execution engine, the programming model, and the higher level language. Um, for Hadoop, Hadoop, is, Hadoop um, implements the MapReduce programming model, so this is directly built in, and Hadoop is also the um, execution engine for that. And on top of Hadoop, we got multiple higher level languages, such as yeah, Pig, Jekyll, or Hive. So the Dried stack, Dried is a system that comes from Microsoft, it's a little bit different. Here you have some kind of uh, execution engine called Dried, which is 
um, a system that executes data flow graphs in parallel, and on top of that, you got multiple or different ways to express higher, higher level queries. For example, you got a uh, dried link, or you got a language called scope, which is quite similar to, to SQL, so um, a little bit similar to, to Hive. And finally, there's the stratosphere stack. We got the execution engine Nephila, which is somehow similar to Dried, and the pack programming model, which um, is a generalization of MapReduce, and that is compiled into Nephila, um, into Nephila jobs. On top of that, one could think of different or of those um, high-level languages that, that come for Hadoop, which could be forked for to, to work with the stratosphere stack, since packed packs are a generalization of MapReduce that it sh shouldn't be that uh, that hard or sh should be at least somehow doable. <laughs> so this talk will uh, focus on the pack programming model and a little bit talk also on the Nephil execution engine and how it, how, do, how the gap how we gap the bridge between the programming model and the execution engine. So in a nutshell, we got um, those two components, um, the pack programming model, uh, which is based on so-called parallelization contracts. And uh, those um, somehow declaratively define uh, data parallelism. And those are centered around second order functions. So MapReduce comes from functional programming. You got second order functions, which uh, except another function, so the user code as a first order function, which is then called within the second order function. And um, as I already said, the, the pack programming model is a generalization of map and reduce. And we have the Nephila execution engine, which is, um, I already said, a dried style execution engine, and that executes data flow graphs in parallel. So you define a data flow graph, and then um, the, the nodes are tasks, and the edges are communication channels, and the engine splits those tasks into subtasks and revires the execution or the, the, the channels and then executes that on multiple nodes. Um, the data is read from a different distributed file system. Currently, we use the, the uh, Hadoop file system for that. And um, the Dried system is a very flexible engine to, to execute distributed, distributed uh, data processing tasks, so you can uh, basically model uh, any execution or shipping strategy using, using Nephila. So you can implement a broadcast strategy or a repartition strategy. So this is very flexible. And you, we have a lot of uh, ways to influence how that is executed in parallel. And finally, Stratosphere is the, the combination of the programming model and the execution engine. And what it actually does, it compiles pack, programming, pack programs into jobs for Nephila that are then executed on Nephila. And um, we, we combine the um, yeah, polarization abstraction with a flexible execution engine. So here is an uh, intuition of how uh, pacts look like. So those are map and reduce. In our context, or in the context of, of pack programming model, those are also um, pacts or to be a little bit more precise, our input contracts. And uh, you probably all know that. So um, we also work on a key value data model, a packed, um, or the, the map packed, uh, divides your input set in, into independently processable, processable subsets. On for the map, each subset um, consists of exactly one data item of the input set. So the idea of input contracts is to partition your input set into independently processable subsets. For the reuse, it looks a little bit different. We got here those, uh, those data items that have the same key are grouped together and processed together. So what exactly is a pact? So a pact is a combination of an input contract and an output contract. And um, input contract are what I already talked about, are those things that split up um, the, the input data set into, into independently processable subsets. So again, um, input contracts are second order functions. So the user code or the user function is um, inserted into the input contract um, as a first order function. Output contracts are a little bit different. So those are 
basically guarantees of the user to the, to the system. So the user can describe what the user code is doing, um, is, is, is doing, and then the system can um, utilize that knowledge for, for optimization. So here are um, other packs we defined. So we got three of them currently. So which is the cross. We, the, the cross has multiple inputs. And uh, what it does, it builds the Cartesian product of the input sets. And then each of the elements of the Cartesian pro product is independently processed. Um, that is pretty easy. We got another one, which is called match. That one, again, has multiple inputs and resembles somehow an uh, equality join on the, um, on the input sets. So those items that have the same key are put together and then uh, processed together. The co-group is quite similar to the match, but here first we group on, the, on both input sets and then those groups that have the same keys are processed together. So in, for, for the co-group, um, one key is, or all keys of the same type are processed together, and for the match, that doesn't necessarily have to be. So um, all here, only, only pairs coming from both input sets are processed together. So um, here again, the same query, and now I would look like to, to implement that using the uh, the, the pack programming model. We have the uh, order input, which we would put uh, uh, re process by a map step. So the user code here would basically do the same thing as in MapReduce. We would just filter um, filter the the uh, relation project the relation to reduce the number of columns we have, and finally set the key to the order key. Similar for the line item side. So again, a map to uh, reduce the data by um, projecting it, setting the key also to the order key, which is the join key here. Use the match to do the join. So the user code here only has to do the, the concatenation of, um, of the tuples. And then we could use the reduce to do the, um, to do the grouping and aggregation. So you see, we are not, um, we are allowed to uh, basically arbitrarily put those packs together. We were, we're not restricted uh, as in the MapReduce programming model to always have those MapReduce steps, MapReduce, MapReduce. We can also, um, yeah, basically put, put those arbitrarily together. So um, another task expressed as pack program uh, is a simple k-means iteration. Here we have a um, input set of data points, um, which are those red dots. We have uh, the, the centers. We also read them the blue points, and then we do a cross operation to, to compute the distance of all data points to all cluster centers. So here the Cartesian product of the data points on and input centers are built, and in the user code we compute the Euclidean distance. The next step would be to find for each cluster center um, or for each data point the nearest cluster center. Uh, that can be done in the reduce step using uh, the, a minimal aggregation. We set here the key to the, to the cluster, cluster ID key, so next reduce step will work on um, grouping all cluster centers or all data points or all distances that belong to one cluster center together and then we can compute the average on the, on the position of the points to move the data points in the middle of, of their associated data points. So this is pretty easy. And finally, yeah, just do the output. So that was how the execution or the, the programming model looked like. Um, here comes the, a, a little bit on the NEFL execution engine, so the, the system that actually executes the um, executes the, the, the programs. So as I already said, um, Nephilim uh, works or 
evaluates data flow graphs in parallel. So here's one of those graphs. Um, we, we got uh, four tasks here, two input sets and one output set. Um, yeah, the vertices run the user code, the channels or the, the edges are the, the channels that the data flows on, and uh, Nephilo supports different kinds of channels, so we got network channels and memory channels and file channels. And also, it supports a lot of annotations, so you're able to say uh, to man how many subtasks um, one node should be split up and um, whether how, m how many of those should run on the same machine. You can uh, specify the type of the virtual machine a task or should, should run on um, channel types. Yeah, qu quite a lot of things to, to influence how, this, how the thing is executed in the cluster. Um, putting um, no pack programming into a Nephila, in, in such a Nephila graph um, is shown on this slide, so how it works. So basically, we get um, here, we, we have the, the, the graph that I was showing on the, on the slide before. So we have each node here is the code that is executed by on, on a machine. And this code is, is separated in, in three shells. So, so the first one is actually the Nephila execution code that, is, that comes with the Nephila framework. Then we got some packed grouping code. So this is the code that um, and, and Hadoop would correspond to the to the sorting for the for the reduce step, and also for the um, for for the uh, in, in the map step for, for partitioning the data into the different buckets. Um, so this is handled here in the in the orange shell, and finally in the most most inner the, the most inner code would be the user code that is then executed and called. So having such an um, Nephila schedule or, or Nephila job for, for, for being executed, distributed, this job is spent or, or is, uh, the, the nodes are multiplied and the edges are rewired and then it is executed on the, on the system. So um, Nephila comes or, or the, the whole system comes with uh, optimization potential. So um, one packed can, can be executed or, or run by different st strategies. We saw for the, for the Hadoop case, uh, during the join, we got the repartitioning strategy and we had the, the um, broadcasting strategy, which had to be manually implemented into MapReduce. Implementing a join in the pack programming model as a match um, gives actually the system the choice whether it uses the, um, the broadcasting strategy or the repartitioning strategy. So there is um, for for a single pact, there is already optimization potential. So some pacts can be executed in different ways. But we got also um, optimization uh, possibilities if, when, we, when we look at the, at the whole, whole graph. So there is an uh, optimization potential across pacts. And those come basically from the, from the output contract. So if we know that the user function uh, doesn't modify the key of its input set, and we know that this partitioning is can, can be used afterwards, we know we don't have to repartition. So we can avoid a lot of data shuffling here. And the output contracts basically say something like that. So they state like so things like the key, our key is identical to the input key, output key is identical to input key, or uh, output key is a super key of the input key, or the output key is uh, unique, and stuff like that can be expressed using the, the output contracts. And yeah, as I said, we got here to, for the, for the join and aggregation uh, job ex expressed as pack program, we can have two, two options, how we can execute them using a broadcasting st strategy and finally doing the shuffling after the joining, or we can do the, uh, the other way around. Here we follow for the first, uh, at first, the, the Hadoop strategy for, for repartitioning. So we first shuffle the data and do the join using the, in the, in the reduce, or in, which would correspond to the Hadoop job uh, in the reduce. Um, and then, since we know that the, um, that the grouping key is a super key of the, um, of the output key of the, of the matcher, we know we don't have to shuffle the data again. 
we only have to have to do a local sort and um, do the grouping and aggregation that way. So we don't, in, in both, for, for both cases, we only have to shuffle the data once and not twice. So um, next steps on our research ag ag agenda are, final, are first um, adding more input or more input contracts. So we have um, things in mind uh, such as a window reducer or fuzzy matcher. So um, something we, we got an order on the, or we define an order on the key space and then we can just um, build windows on the, on, on the range which then are independently processed or for the, for the fuzzy matcher we, we define somehow a, um, a distance measure between keys and say all keys that are within this distance should, should be uh, grouped together. We also want to um, add flexible checkpointing and recovery, uh, which basically means uh, to, to find the, the optimal balance between uh, checkpointing everything, such as Hadoop does, and checkpointing nothing, so that we know, um, mm, for, for example, a job is pretty, runs pretty fast, so the, 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 the chance that something happens in between uh, is, is not that bad. We might, we, we can take the risk and, and uh, do a little bit, little bit less checkpointing, or yeah, basically issues like that. So managing the risk of node failures uh, again, the costs that they cause, that that would that checkpointing would cause. And finally, there is another point um, called robust and adaptive um, execution, which basically means um, in setups like uh, in those huge analysis setups, the data is not known in advance and maybe the environment also changes. Um, Steve talked about um, uh, executing Hadoop on clouds. We also think about doing that so we got have a dynamic environment where we possibly could add nodes or we could remove nodes which could um, affect the system. So we need to be somehow adaptive. So we, we want to adapt to, to the changes. And this is, this is um, um, the man by the, by the last point. So um, how, how does um, open source re relate to us? So first, um, the stratosphere system is built on a couple of uh, open source components. We're using the uh, Hadoop file system. We also used for the Nephilim system the, um, the, the uh, communication layer. And we, we plan to support uh, the, the Apache Avro project, which, which does serialization. So we want to include that to, to be able to uh, work with data that comes from that. Um, yeah, how can Stratosphere possibly uh, benefit from the from the uh, ecosystem? As I said, pacts are a generalization of MapReduce, so um, it should be. Um, so so doing a fork might might be affordable for to doing that. And finally, yeah, Stratosphere going open source. Of course, we are trying to do that. We have no schedule for that uh, yet. Um, we would plan to do that by end of this year, but um, yeah, we'll see whether we can hold that. So in summary, um, yeah, the pack programming model is a generalization of map and reduce uh, and supports complex operations uh, for, or is, is, is a good match for complex operations that could, should be executed in parallel. Um, the engine uh, is able to, to optimize pack programs, so the way this, the uh, task is executed by the system, um, is not set by the, by the uh, developer, um, which means we can avoid um, unnecessary shipping or processing of data. And um, yeah, finally, the Nephila system is a very flexible engine to, to, to process that data. Um, in summary, Stratosphere combines MapReduce technology with uh, technology coming from parallel database systems. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Hello. Um, how long does it take to compile an execution plan with your system? Typically? So you mean uh, to, to optimize it? Um, is that something the system does itself, or is that something that so is presented? So actually, um, we're, we're currently building the, the prototypes, so the optimizer is not 
um, not finished by now, um, but we, we plan to, to do that, so, so this shouldn't take a long time. So compare it to the, to the runtime. Yeah, okay, so we're talking seconds or minutes for the execution plan to be developed by the system? Uh, sorry, can you talk a little bit louder? Sorry, uh, you said in the, in the, I think the last couple of slides that you have effectively an execution planner that um, provides optimization of the, of the, yeah. of the runtime. Uh, could you give us an indication of how long it takes to develop an execution plan using the system? So for example, on a classical database engine, you would have a, a, an execution planner that runs within a few milliseconds before it goes to a fallback execution plan. Yeah, so, so the optimization is not, won't, won't be that complicated. So I mean, um, in this setup, we don't have as much knowledge as, as a relational database system has. We don't have um, elaborate s statistics that, that we can take into, into account. So a lot of, right. um, of the optimization um, will be idly done at runtime. So uh, we want to come up with a robust plan, a robust initial plan that performs uh, quite good, even in case of, of worst case uh, scenarios. Um, but if there is a chance that the plan can be optimized during execution, uh, that should be done. So the pl plan should be adapted to, to, to following, follow, follow those, opt uh, those opportunities. So that's the plan. Okay, any further questions? Okay. Then, thanks. None. Okay, yeah, then, thank you.